Hello, this is MakerJ11, and guess what guys? I have one million views! One million! This is awesome! I cannot thank you guys enough for everything you've done over the past three years. I have had my channel, it's awesome. All the liking, commenting, uh, subscribing, everything you guys do, it's just awesome. Just watching my videos this is awesome, so thank you all so much. I cannot thank you enough. So, we are going to smash some TVs today, because it's going to be awesome in celebration, I suppose. So, yeah. Um, I don't have one. I don't have two. I don't have three. I have four CRT TVs to smash. So this is going to be awesome. So, and wait till you see the size of the one TV. I'll show you in a minute. But, um, so, here's my contraption that I made to uh, smash TVs. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, there it is. <laughs> it's nothing much. It's probably the worst of my building skills, but that's okay, because it didn't take me very long to build. Um, so basically, the frame is made... So the main piece of action here is this 8.8-pound .8 sledgehammer, and this is going to be the part that smashes the TV. So that is just hose clamped and duct taped onto this uh, little extension, wood extension there. And then um, there's a nice... All this wood came from a old uh, uh, box spring. And, uh, guys... Don't, if you want good wood, don't take apart a box spring for the wood. It's a waste of time because there is like a bazillion nails in it and staples and uh, just, it's glued together too. This one was, it was glued, stapled, and nailed together, and then the cover was stapled on as well. So there was a ton of staples in it. Plus the wood is really bad too. It really cracks and everything when you put screws in it. It's just really bad, but um, it worked. So yeah. Um, so I have two two boards here going over to the wall. Those are screwed in because when the sledgehammer comes down, it's going to have a lot of back and forth force. So I wanted to make sure it was good and stable, and I have a nice pivot point there just to bolt going through the uh, handle of the sledgehammer, or rather the extension. Then I have a nice A-frame holding everything secure and good and sturdy. So that'll be nice. And then. Uh, yeah, so then my trigger mechanism is this ladder back here. So I have a board here on top of the ladder and a little, uh, just a roller, or it's a steel rod. And the sledgehammer is going to be right here, and this string is where I pull. So I'm going to pull that string, and it's going to pull the board out from under the sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is going to fall and smash the TV. It's going to be awesome. So, and I'm going to be recording this with five cameras. So that's going to be fun. So we have one camera here. This one is a really cheap $5 camera I bought at a garage sale. It doesn't even record sound. It's so, it's so bad. Um, but So I don't even know if the video is going to turn out of that one, but we'll see. So that one's going to be recording the sledgehammer. Then this, this one is also recording the sledgehammer, or the TV from above, 120 frames per second. I have a camcorder over there. That one's, just, uh, that one's not very good quality. And then I have... Um, this camera, which is going to be recording right on that tripod there, and then I'm going to be holding my phone. So I think that's... Oh, and then my uh, my camcorder, which is going to be recording uh, 300 frames per second at the front of the TV. So we're going to get five angles on this, hopefully. Maybe f four at best. Uh, or five at best, but we might get four. I'm not sure if this one's going to turn out. Um, let's see what else. <clears throat> oh, yes. And the TVs. So we're going to start out with a 13-inch. Then we're going to move up to this 19-inch. And then we're going to do this 16-inch uh, computer monitor, and I'm going to display a picture on it and see what that looks like. And then, wait for this one, a 36, or rather 37-inch TV. It's huge, and it is really, really, really heavy. Yeah, I, I, don't, I haven't even taken it apart yet, because... Um, I'm going to see if I even want to take it apart, depending on how big these ones, how big of a mess they make without the implosion band, with the implosion band, whatever. I'm going to decide after I implode those to see whether this one, whether I want to take it out of the case or not to smash it. But this thing is huge. My mom, like 15 minutes ago, she came at home. She knew I was smashing TVs, and she was like, hey, there's a nice TV along the road. And I was like, how big is it? And she was like, it's pretty big. And I was like... So I went down there and got it. I could barely get this thing on the back of the truck. It was so, it's so huge. So this is a big monster TV. It's at least 100 pounds, I'd say. <laughs> but yeah, that thing is going to be fun. So, but this is actually not going to be just, uh, just fun. This is actually going to be educational, too. I'm going to do some physics problems here to uh, basic physics. So we'll get to that in a second. And I also have uh, five, four lights on this. So we have a nice shop light here. This is a um, heating element, actually, from a uh, 
from a laser printer, so it really doesn't produce that much light, even though it consumes the most amount of power. It's 500 watts, but the amount of light it produces is very minimal, mostly heat. But um, then we have two other bulbs here that are nice and bright, and they are everything's powered well except for the uh, the heater lamp from a um, from the uh, laser printer is powered off of two variax. So this variax steps the voltage up to 140 volts, and then the power from this one goes into this one. So we get like I don't know, it's probably like 160 or something volts to make the light bulbs a little bit brighter. Here is actually with without the um, step up voltage, voltage that's 120 volts. So a <clears throat> little bit brighter, a little bit more white light. So the bulbs certainly won't last as long, but they'll last plenty long. <laughs> I'm not going to do this for very long. So without further ado, let's get to the physics problems. So my hammer weighs 8.8 um, .8 pounds. Convert that to kilograms because you have to do that to convert it, or you have to convert it to kilograms to um, work physics problems. So four point or four kilograms. <clears throat> the hammer at the highest point will be at 47 inches or 1.19 meters. So here's our sledgehammer and it's 1.19 meters uh, from the final position. So we will assume that at its top, at the top of its um, uh, travel, it's going to only, because it's not moving, it's going to have only potential energy. So stored energy or energy of gravity, because gravity is going to accelerate it down to the final position. So it's going to gain energy, um, or the energy is going to be converted. So the equation for um, potential energy is mass times gravity or acceleration. Well, no, it is gravity. Mass times gravity times the height. So where did I do the calculations for that? Right here. All right, so we put in <coughs> four kilograms for our mass, 9.81 meters per second for our um, gravity, and then 1.19 uh, meters for the height. So we get 46.7 joules of energy will be the energy that it has here, and because conservation of energy tells us that the energy that an object has is always the same, so it just changes form. So here the energy will be potential energy. It won't be moving. It'll just be stored energy. When it's down here, it's going to be <coughs> moving very rapidly. So it'll have a large velocity, but it won't have any potential energy left. So all the potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy or an energy of motion. So the equation for energy of uh, kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, so we can basically set, so at the top it's going to have 46.7 joules of energy, and at the bottom it's going to have 46.7 joules of energy. So it just gets converted. And in, in the middle here, it's going to also have 46.7 joules of energy, but ha about half of it will be potential and half of it will be kinetic because it hasn't been all converted yet. So here's, uh, let's see, so here you can see the uh, the units cancel out to make joules, and then uh, because it's newton meters, uh, kilograms times mass, or yeah, mass. Wait, mass? Meters divided by seconds squared is newtons, and then newtons times meters is joules. So that's energy. So if we set this equation equal to 46.7 joules, we get and plug everything in, we get as a velocity. 4.83 meters per second, or if you like feet per second, 15 feet per second, <clears throat> or if you like miles per hour, 10.8 miles per hour. So it doesn't sound very fast, but oh well. So I could probably throw or throw this sledgehammer a lot faster. Um, anyways, the other thing I calculated was how much force is on the screen of that TV. It's amazing amount. So the TV is. Uh, 37 inches uh, diagonally, or whatever that direction that is, and across it's 30 inches wide, 23 inches tall. So if you multiply that out, you get 67 square inches of surface area on the screen. 
<coughs> and then atmospheric pressure is 14.6 psi, about, I didn't really calculate it for here, so that's pounds per inches squared. And then if you multiply those two together, you get 14,000 pounds of force atmospheres pressing just on the surface of that screen. That is amazing because of the vacuum inside. Because there's basically mostly a perf pretty much a perfect vacuum on the inside. So that means that there's full atmospheric pressure pushing on all sides of that TV. So you get seven tons of pressure pushing on that TV. That is a lot of pressure. I'm actually scared to break that. Or if you want to convert it to kilograms, 6,400 6, kilograms of force or of, of weight press pressing on that TV screen. That is amazing, okay? So basically it actually goes up like exponentially or squared as the TV size rises. So I think the glass of that is going to be really thick. Well, it has to be. It's really heavy, too. But the flyback of this, that is going to be awfully nice, too. Um, so, yeah. So now that we did our calculations, and it's going to be going 10.8 miles per hour when it's at the bottom, um, let's actually smash some TVs. So we're going to start out with that 13-inch one. Three, two, one. Because it was on. It's trying to come alive. And here is the last TV. That ginormous fat TV. Just looking at the front of the screen, it looks like the glass is an inch thick. So we are going to smash this boy, but first we're, I'm just going to e examine how well it's built. Look at these huge, like, um, I don't know what these are called, the, the deflection coils or whatever they are. Look at those. It's bigger than my, it's as big as my thumb. That's going to have a ton of copper in there. Yeah. And look at these nice big resistors here. Look, I've never seen ones like that before. They're kind of like heat synced to give it more surface area. And it's actually not that big of a flyback, amazingly. It's actually pretty small, but oh well. Let's smash it. And look at the size. Look how big around the uh, electron gun is. It's, this is one from the smaller TVs. It's a little larger. <laughs> so yeah, this thing is huge. So let's smash it.